Item number SCP-173-J Object Class Euclid Note Following incident August 17th, 1992 SCP-173-J's object class may have to be revised. Note number 2 On August 21st, 1992 the action to which footnote 1 referred was made unnecessary as the object class Euclid has been altered and no longer refers to items with cat faces. Special Containment Procedures Item SCP-173-J is to be given a container to act as a central living area. As SCP-173-J is basically harmless, it is to be permitted to move freely about Facility 17. The site director foresees no adverse consequences from this policy. Update The following disastrous unforeseen consequences. New Containment Procedures are in development. See Incident Log. August 17th, 1992. Description contained in Facility 17 as of 1992. Note, spaces are not intended to containment site names until 1995. It is constructed from concrete and rebar with traces of Krylon brand spray paint as well as what appears to be state fair grade water-based face paint in a cat face pan. SCP-173-J is animate and extremely playful. The object cannot move uh, within the direct line of sight. Object is reported to initiate interaction by standing uncomfortably close to subjects. Some personnel have reported low, asthmatic sounding sniffling noises. These are presumed to be imaginary or mimetic or something. SCP-173-J's Primary motive seems to be seeking attention, for example. If SCP-173-J encounters a researcher working on a computer or reading a document, the researcher blinks. The sculpture will stand on the object in an attempt to gain the researcher's focus. If SCP-173-J is in a room processing a window, it will sometimes take hold of a researcher's head and move it to face the window. This has been construed as SCP-173-J honestly requesting to play outside. The established procedure for handling these situations is to pat SCP-173-J in a friendly manner and say, Run along now, you little scamp. Note that SCP-173-J's action occurs too quickly for subjects to respond. When at full speed, the object is capable of completing three shenanigans per second. On... July 20th, 1992, SCP-173-J appeared wearing a sombrero. The object entered a fiesta state in which, according to audio analysis, it produced and rapidly shook a pair of castanets while running in unoccupied rooms or hallways. The origin of this hat-based secondary phenomenon is unknown, but the site director determined that confiscating it or investigating the event in any other way would be, to quote the official directive, interfering with forces beyond our comprehension. Facility 17 staff have reported in official transcripts that this phenomenon was lots of fun and like Christmas, single day mile, and free pretzel day at the cafeteria put together. Any staff who attempt to induce a fiesta state in SCP-173-J will be assigned to toilet hour duty. Personnel report the sound of scraping stone originating from within the container when no one else is present inside and the object is not under video surveillance. Freelance stone scraping analysts have determined that SCP-173-J is practicing the dance of its people. It is considered normal and any change in this behavior should be reported to the acting HMCO supervisor on duty. The thick brown substance on the floor of SCP-173-J's dwelling is either expansion brand chocolate pudding. Origin of this material is unknown. The substance poses no apparent danger and is allowed to accumulate freely. Update. See Incident Log, August 14th, 1992. Incident Log, August 14th, 1992. Assistant Freelancer Bramwell was assigned to inspect SCP-173-J for physical changes. Researchers Murphy 
and Nichols spoke to him using a two-way handheld communicator. The following is a transcript of the communication transmitted during the inspection. Guys, this floor is really, really slippery. Man, I bet. Ah, no surprise to you. It's all puddingly. No, I mean, I don't think I can even get over to the sculpture. The stuff is a few inches deep. You mean a few centimeters deep. This is probably going on the record. At least try to be professional. Beep! Collision is heard. It's in my eyes! Oh, beep! I didn't hear what you said. Watch your language, doctor. It's standing over me. It's just, just waiting, I think. It sounds like he's up for a pudding wrestle. It's okay. I'm pretty sure you can take him. Oh, God! I just blinked and he's leaning toward me. Don't worry about language. It'll probably just be taken out in the transcript. It's on top of me. I can't see. It's crushing my... It's just a pen, man. You can reverse it. Wait, they can do that? Sure, it's called reduction. I can't. He must... Wait. <coughs> 400 pounds. Ah, nice clinical tone. You got this. <laughs> Big Dachshund, huh? Beep. That's fantastic. <laughs> I said beep. Seriously, how have I not heard about this? Oh, they just started doing it. It's actually encouraged, since it apparently it makes the documentation more interesting and suspenseful if you leave out the scary or salacious bits. I'm losing consciousness. The goats, that's really nice of them. There might be children reading this. Sweep the log. Incident Log, August 17th, 1992. Following the recovery of Assistant Researcher Bromwell's body, it was determined that the storage container required a thorough cleaning to facilitate access to its resident. SCP-173-J was monitored carefully while high-pressure showers and a large drain grate were installed in the chamber. On August 17th, the following incident occurred. 2 hours and 40 seconds. The showers in SCP-173-J's chamber are activated. The pudding is scoured from the floor. 2 hours, 1 minute, 34 seconds. Researcher Murphy notes that the water-based ace paint on SCP-173-J is also being washed away by the sprinklers. 2 hours, 5 minutes, 18 seconds. The showers are turned off. 2 hours, 20 minutes, 4 seconds. The video feed monitoring SCP-173-J deactivates and becomes unresponsive. The interior of the chamber is silent. 2 hours, 28 minutes, 11 seconds. The HMCL supervisor is called in. 2 hours, 31 minutes, 46 seconds. The HMCL supervisor arrives takes inventory of the situation and shrugs. 2 hours, 31 minutes, 52 seconds. The HMCO supervisor is fired. 2 hours, 33 minutes, 7 seconds. Researchers Murphy and Nichols are assigned to investigate. 2 hours, 33 minutes, 51 seconds. The two doctors enter the chamber. Researcher Nichols note via two-way communicator that the floor near SCP-173-J appears to be dinch dark red. Dr. Nichols takes a sample of the coating and remarks with extreme surprise that it does not taste like pudding at all. Two hours, thirty-four minutes, one second. The song is heard faintly in the background. Note, this is a, a determined to be Eight second clip of Rock You Like a Hurricane by the Scorpions. Researcher Murphy remarks, I think I have a text message. Two hours, 34 minutes, 12 seconds. Dr. Nichols groans audibly. Dr. Murphy is heard remarking that the sender is most likely Kelly, who was previously speculating about breaking up with her boyfriend Mark. Dr. Murphy indicates an imperative need to discover whether such a procedure has been enacted, and if so, and whether he can hit that on a rebound. 
2 hours, 34 minutes, 19 seconds. Dr. Nichols announces that he will maintain line of sight on SCP-173-J by closing one eye at a time. This never works. 2 hours, 34 minutes, 26 seconds. A snapping sound is heard in the audio feed. 2 hours, 34 minutes, 28 seconds. A second snapping sound is heard in the audio feed. Remaining log expunged. Following this event, SCP-173-J's containment procedures are scheduled to be completely revised. The new procedures will stipulate that SCP-173-J be kept locked in his containment area, which will be cleaned by hand. Any implication that SCP-173-J's containment document should be revised will be denied, as SCP-173-J represents the classic roots of the Foundation, which persists no matter which direction the organization has taken in the meantime. Before this revision was ordered, the site director requested that Foundation senior staff decommission SCP-173-J due to its new properties, as the staffers are to quote the director's requisition letter, awesome and dreamy and wacky. However, the request was denied. All senior staff were too busy chatting with seducing, welding, playing practical jokes with, or riding to victory various SCP objects. The site director identified this setback as disastrous to the safety and integrity of the Foundation, but exactly as hilarious as they think it is.